When I'm home alone, I talk to my spice cabinet. And <laughs> We're a better audience. <laughs> and I have written about 20 poems, each of which is an ode to a seasoning. <laughs> so I'm going to read, I don't know how much time I have, but I'm going to read you a poem called Two Cinnamon. Two Cinnamon. Sweet wood, I followed your scent, mellow with an early touch of lemon bitter at the finish, to the banquet plate of quills piled high besides mounds of nutmeg, cloves, and mace, to the cup of a nobleman's son flavoring his milk to soothe a cough, to the goat meat in the farmer's cellar, the embalming rooms and funeral pyres mixed with the scent of burning flesh, to the gift one man gave another because he brought him home and had his wife wash his wounds and tie a scrape branch to his broken elbow after they found him in the woods beaten by thieves. The enamel box Christopher Columbus took sailing to the New World for Queen Isabella, seeking you, rhubarb, and pepper. This smaller wood box carried against his chest by Gonzalo Pizarro on a raft on the Amazon, Amazon amid a land so lush it must contain Payase la Canela. God must have grown the taste of heaven here. The pungent canals of Venice and the packs of horses trudging north on the dust pass. Two stacks piled on rafts crossing the sea from the Moluccas. The scent was thick as the Arab trader told the Venetian his tale over wine. Enormous birds carry quills to their cliffside nests. So the people slaughter an ox and hack it to pieces the size of my fist, just small enough for the birds to pick up and carry back to the nests, and big enough to tip the nest to the ground, releasing the sticks into the air and of hundreds, a handful, roll down the mountain. And to the next man, a different tale. It comes from deep canyons defended by vicious snakes the size of a man's leg. Or it is fished up in nets at the source of the Nile, out at the edge of the world. Or it comes on rafts, which was true. I followed you to the Portuguese boat downwind of the tiny island at the top of India, the smell thick eight leagues out to the sea, to the wet air as boys cut young tree shoots in the rain, and other boys scrape the outer bark and cut each branch and pry out the inside bark in long rows. Only we can do this, their fathers say. It is our job for the king. I followed you mixed with sweat in one boy's palm when he keeps a still wet piece to smell secretly that night as he curls to sleep. They leave you to dry until you curl into long quills, thin, smooth, yellow-brown bark delicately coiled inside as if hiding from the light. I put you powdered on grapefruit and in sticks and chamomile tea. You who the Spanish explorers would be amazed and angry to see in a cheap square white tin, so coveted a delicacy, who anointed the altar in Jerusalem. And think of my grandmother at 90, spotted brown and papery, with a sweet smell of age from far away, as if she were a girl a quill coiling into herself at the end of life, remembering her favorite buttery pastries. You make me believe that time can be held and chewed, powdered and stored, and waiting for me. Sweet promise, early dream of otherness, delicate sister to chocolate and coffee, those powerful brothers who would change the world.